In Isfahan, Iran, explosions were heard at an Air Force base and a military facility. Was it Israel? I'm Yair Pinto, and this is a special edition of Boots on the Ground, a report about what is happening in Israel on the 196th day of Israel's war against all of Iran's terrorist proxy organizations, six days after Iran's unprecedented attack against Israel last Sunday. Intense explosions were heard tonight in Iran, Syria, and Iraq. An American official told the ABC network that Israel attacked targets in Iran, but did not confirm the attacks in Syria and Iraq. The Reuters news agency reported that this time Israel would inform the United States in advance of the move, in contrast to the ambiguity maintained in the Damascus attack. However, the sources clarified that Washington had no involvement in the attack, while in Israel, for the time being, no response has been given to the reports. Meanwhile, the IDF's air defense system is on high alert. Despite the reports of the echoes of many explosions heard in the area, media in Iran claimed that no damage was detected and that the explosions heard in the area were due to successful interceptions carried out by the Iranian air defense systems. According to the Fars Agency, an explosion was heard in the northwest of the city near the Air Force base. In other reports, it is claimed that there were explosions near the local airport in Iran. It was also reported that civilian air traffic in the country has been disrupted. A source also told the Saudi El Had channel that a warning notice was issued regarding the existence of flights in the western region of Iran. Several Iranian nuclear sites are located in Isfahan province, including Natanz, which is considered as the country's main uranium enrichment site. The reports of the retaliatory attack in Iran, while in Israel remain silent, come at an interesting time, the 85th birthday of Iran's supreme leader, Ali Khamenei. Earlier tonight, according to the Pentagon, US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke with Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. It was reported that the two discussed Iran's actions in the Middle East, as well as other regional threats. The Iranian government is trying to broadcast calm and business as usual. The media in Iran broadcast a routine report this morning from the city of Isfahan, hours after it was reported that the air defense systems were activated near a military base. Videos posted by the official government media portals showed the regular movement of vehicles as well as military forces near the Air Force base. However, at the same time, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps announced a state of maximum alert in all military bases all over the country as the Supreme Council for National Security in Iran was called for an urgent discussion. And on Iranian television, the spokesman for the space agency, Hussein Dalarian, referred to the attack in his country saying that the air defense shot down several small UAVs successfully and there was no missile attack. Meanwhile, three Iranian officials told the New York Times that the attack hit an airbase near the central city of Isfahan in Iran. Listen, I think this is not the big attack. This is only a very precise and calculated warning to Iran from the direction of Israel. For years, the biggest threat to global security and specifically to the state of Israel has been the Iranian regime. Israel's greatest strategic goal is to prevent Iran from deploying nuclear weapons. Since the beginning of the war in Gaza, this has taken on a new urgency. Please share our content and spread the truth. Take a minute and click on the follower button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Together, let's give the truth its proper place. Beyond that, it seems as if the American administration is limiting the Israeli response to the attacks against us for some reason. That requires the Israeli military to use a lot of creativity, thought, and precision. The time has probably come to change the perception of the fight against Iran's missile program, the distribution of weapons from it, and its model of using proxy forces in this region. You really do not need to be a rocket scientist to see the connection between Iran's pursuit of nuclear weapons and their building a ballistic missile program. Israel cannot allow this threat to go unchanged. I will explain for a moment about the Iranian base that was attacked. Intelligence officials in Israel and the United States have been following a large network of tunnels 
south of Iran's nuclear facility in Natanz since 2020. This nuclear facility was built at enormous expense, deep in the mountains, and the tunnel network underneath it must have also cost a lot of money. The long-suffering people of Iran, who can barely afford bread, should be told about this. This facility was built in order to allow the regime to build a military nuclear facility that would be protected from air attacks. But if this facility was in fact hit by the Israelis, then it is a big humiliation for the regime. Meanwhile, the Iranian El Alam news portal quoted a Syrian security official about an Israeli attack in southern Syria between the suburbs of the Dara district and the suburbs of the El Sawaida district. According to the report, the target of the attack was a radar base, but Al Jazeera reported that several sites were hit in southern Syria. At the moment, there is no official comment from the Syrian regime. Switching focus for military matters, you've probably heard that Israel was not harmed by the Iranian missile and UAV attack last Sunday morning because our allies and our own military defense system shut down all the weapons that were fired towards us. This is not the whole story. Israelis suffered terrible emotional trauma from this attack and on Thursday we suffered another blow. This time an economic one. The S&P Global Rating Agency downgraded Israel's credit rating from AA- to A- with a negative outlook indicating an expectation of further credit rating downgrades in the future. The analysis accompanying the downgrade made it clear that the intensifying conflict with Iran and the increased amount of money the government needs to spend on defense were the reasons behind the move. Rating companies usually issue updated credit ratings reports at predetermined times, but if there is a highly urgent situation, they sometimes take urgent action to address it. The accountant general said that the rating decision came in direct response to the Iranian missile attack and added that investors in the world and in Israel proceed with the knowledge that the bonds of the state of Israel are safe and liquid assets and the Israeli economy is diverse, innovative and fundamentally strong. The state of Israel will successfully deal with all the challenges it will face. One must act with financial responsibility in order to ensure long-term growth of the economy and a decrease in the debt to GDP ratio. However, despite these necessary words of calm from an Israeli government official, this credit rating downgrade is bad news for every single Israeli citizen. Here at TBN Israel, we will be keeping a close eye on the story to bring you updates going forward. Until then, thank you for watching this special edition of Boots on the Ground. Please continue to help us spread the truth by subscribing to this YouTube channel and sharing it with anyone who wants to know the truth. And the most important thing, especially now, is to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.